to SC1971 is an all RF transistor capable of outputting 6 watt at 175 MHz. When used with its bigger brother to SC1946, the system can deliver up to 28 watts at 13.5 volts. Typical FM power transmitters operate in class C, which creates lots of harmonics that interfere with upper frequency bands. So this test will focus on C1971 with output power around 5 watts at 89.5 MHz only. Five sections listed here summarize what was done in the test. The target transmitter consists of six block diagrams. First, the power supply for the transmitter is modified to deliver 1.5 amp at 12.5 volts. It also powers the oscillator circuitry which has its own onboard voltage regulator. The oscillator is based on an SAA1057 with BF998 and a buffer stage. It creates one fixed frequency at 89.5 MHz at the reference source for the transmitter. The oscillator uses single layer plana spiral coil as shown in the picture. An auxiliary circuit board is installed next to the oscillator. Its objective is to test and select two best RF transistors which will be used to drive the C1971. Here, several RF transistors from different sources are tested to observe their current gain and RF driving capability. The two best transistors from this test will be used for the pre-driver Q1 and the driver Q2. Q1 bias in saturation region acts as a switch to drive Q2, which is in class C. Current readings for both transistors are observed. During the test, Q1 and its resistive collector load are replaced several times to observe collector current. This graph shows results from such tests. At the end of the test, Q1 and Q2 are selected with some specific learnings as shown. The two RF transistors that pass the test are reinstalled on the target transmitter board. Apparently Q1 delivers close to 200 mW to drive Q2, which then amplifies this power to 1 Watt to drive Q3. All matching components from Q1 to Q3 are retuned to obtain maximum current. This circuit diagram shows all final components which are installed on the target transmitter including the low pass filter and the 50 ohm dummy load. The low pass filter is obtained from the ARRL handbook designed for use in HF bands below 50 MHz. It is upscaled for use at 90 MHz. Due to lack of spectrum analyzer, it is unable to test this network to elaborate its performance. These two slides shows the original design which are modified as mentioned earlier. All coils are made from inner conductor of typical TV antenna coaxial cable. They are quick fix but perform well. These coils, regardless of the number of turns, are air core with inner diameter of 6 mm. Each transistor has its own RF suppression circuit to eliminate noise from the circuit. Suppression coils are made differently as an example, so everyone can build one from their imagination. During the test, the dummy load is kept away from metal parts and concrete floor to avoid undesirable SWR effect. All transistors generate heat after 10 minutes of continuous operation, and Q3 will suffer the most without adequate ventilation. Fabrication of RF transistors creates RLC characteristics pertaining to their input and output ports. Value of these RLC vary depending on supply voltage, operating frequency, and output power. In common emitter, the input impedance is typically represented with parallel component consisting of a resistor and a reactance which is frequency dependent. In the case of C1971 at 175 MHz, its input impedance according to the data sheet is a series of 1.3 plus J3.2. Therefore, its internal reactance is inductive at this frequency. At the same time, output impedance is a series of 6.2 minus J3, which is a capacitive reactance as shown in point number 5. At 89.5 MHz, the target transmitter operates with component values and current rating as shown here. 
The dummy load is connected to Q3 across a shape-by-shape low-pass filter with impedance of 50 ohm at both ends. Dummy load can be connected without low-pass filter if C1 and C2 are tuned to establish a reasonable match. Impedance transformation can also be done using parallel tuned tank circuit, although this is not a popular choice. Instead, the Pi and the L matching are more popular, especially the modified L that has been re-engineered to split into two sections composing of a series tune L and a conventional Pi. Component calculation starts with series tune L section to obtain LA, CX, and RX. Once these values are obtained, the components for Pi section are calculated using CX and RX as a starting point. Finally, CX and RX, which form virtual impedance of the L section, will be removed, leaving only CA to tune the L section to the Pi section. This tuning of CA will make the L feels that it ends with a 28 PF, while the Pi feels that it starts with the 21 PF. To match output impedance of driver Q2 to the input impedance of Q3, Again, a parallel tune tank circuit can be used but not popular. A few configurations of T network shown here are more popular. Because input impedance of Q3 is inductive, therefore the network in the middle is selected. Using Smith's chart, the matching components obtained from the actual tape at 89 MHz indicate that the input impedance of Q3 is 10 ohm in series with J12 inductive reactants. Similarly, the output impedance of Q2 is calculated to be 34 minus J62. Finally, if the low pass impedance is actually 50 ohm, the output impedance of Q3 will be 34 minus J76.